Good morning, everyone. Today we are examining Jeremiah chapter 1. And yesterday we, we read through the chapter and gave a basic overview of the book of Jeremiah. This morning we'd like to come through and look at some lessons from Jeremiah chapter 1. And there are a lot of things that we could deal with. Uh, some of them would be historical and some of them would be contextual. But let's go through, I've pulled out three that I would like to look at very briefly this morning and look at some of the things that we could learn from chapter one. Beginning in verse six of the chapter, we read, Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am a youth. For you shall go to all to whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. We have back in verse 5 the statement that he had, he had set him apart for the work of a prophet from the time he was in the womb. And then in verse 6, when the call comes for him to begin to speak to the people of Judah, he says, I cannot speak, for I am but a youth. Uh, while this gives us a little bit of insight into the fact that Jeremiah was still quite young when he began working as a prophet for God, we do not know his exact age. It is often speculated that he is somewhere in the range of 17 to 18 years old because of the fact that that would still make him one who is considered a youth uh, because the age at which one could go into the military or, or serve in the army or go into an apprenticeship was the age of 20. And so it would seem to be that Jeremiah is saying, I'm not even to the age of, of an apprenticeship. I'm not even to the age of being allowed to join the military at this particular point in time. <clears throat> and God says, don't worry about that. He says, you just do what I tell you to do. It's also reminiscent of the statement that Paul makes to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, where he says, let no man despise your youth but be an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. And you have there the recognition that just because an individual is young does not mean they do not have value or they do not have anything that they can say or do that will be able to be used or should be heard by those who are older. Uh, the wisdom of God does not have age limits as to who can say it. And while, yes, it is true that younger people don't always understand the deeper nuances of the things of Scripture, uh, it is also true that there are many young people that seem to, in many ways, have a better grasp of the fundamentals of Scripture than some of their elders do. And so we need to be willing to listen, but we also need to be willing to let uh, those who are able to, those who want to, uh, to become comfortable with speaking when it comes to the Word of God. And so we have here the message of youth. When you drop down to verse number 13, you have the second of the two messages or the two visions that God is going to send to Jeremiah. The first one was of the almond tree or the branch of the almond tree. And he asked him a second time in verse 13, what do you see? And Jeremiah says, I see a boiling pot, and it is facing away from the north. The Lord said to me, Out of the north calamity shall break forth, and all the inhabitants of the of on all the inhabitants of the land. For behold, I am calling all the families of the kingdoms of the north, says the Lord. They shall come, and each one set his throne at the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem, against all its walls and around and against all the cities of Judah. God here says he is going to call the kingdoms of the north. Notice that this is not kingdom, singular, but kingdoms, plural. And he says they are all going to encamp themselves before the gates of Jerusalem. When you're talking about this, remember Assyria is already uh, the powerhouse, but at the same time, they are also already on the backside of their empire. They have been uh, the, the chief uh, nation for around 100 years at this point, but we are within a decade of their ultimate demise with the fall of Nineveh. And so at this point, Assyria is on the backside of her power. 
But there are other kingdoms from the north. You're going to have the Babylonians led by Nebuchadnezzar. You are also going to have the Medes and the Persians, which are going to come from the northeast. Uh, and they are going to be led by Cyrus and Darius and Artaxerxes and various other kings of the Medes and the Persians. And then later you are going to have the kings of the Greeks who are going to come through. You're going to have Alexander the Great. And you're going to have the Seleucids and the Ptolemies later on. And so one of the things that you see here is the families of the kingdoms of the north are going to come and they are all going to stretch their camps out before Jerusalem. They are going to sit at the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem. And it's going to begin with the Babylonians, but it's not going to end with the Babylonians. When you come down to verse number 17, there you have the final statement of God to Jeremiah in this context. And he says, therefore, prepare yourself and arise and speak to them all that I command you. Do not be dismayed before their faces, lest I dismay you before them. For behold, I have made you this day a fortified city and an iron pillar <coughs> and bronze walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against its princes, against its priests, and against the people of the land. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you, for I am with you, says the Lord, to deliver you. From the very beginning, God is going to lay out to Jeremiah the problems that he is going to deal with and the challenges that he is going to face. He says, I am going to place you before them. Who is them? Well, he says it is the kings, the princes, the priests, and the people of Judah. He's talking about his own people. And as such, he says they are going to fight against you, verse 19. The people of Judah are not going to take kindly to the messages that Jeremiah is going to deliver, nor are they going to respond positively to the messages that he is going to proclaim. However, he still has the responsibility to say it. He says, do not be dismayed, for I will be with you, and I will deliver you, says the Lord. God here knows what the people are going to respond or how the people are going to respond to Jeremiah's message. He wants Jeremiah to know from the very outset. He knows what's coming. However, the message still has to be proclaimed. The words of God still have to be presented. And while they will fight against it, they won't win. These are some of the lessons that I pulled out of Jeremiah chapter 1. Certainly there's more that we could talk about. But these are the things that I have seen today. If you have some things that you have uh, that you've seen in this chapter or things that you would like to follow up with, uh, please feel free. But until tomorrow, as we delve into chapter two, have a great day.